Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. So, you may have heard we've got a winter storm coming. I gotta get the bread and milk. I gotta get the bread and milk. They said snow. I gotta get the bread and milk. So, as you know as well, there will be a plethora of YouTubers coming out giving you the top 10 things you need to do to survive the snow apocalypse. I prefer alpaca lips myself, but, you know, potato, potato. Look, folks, look, here's the thing, and I'm just being straight with you. It's probably going to upset some people. Other people see exactly what I'm saying. But it is an insult to your intelligence that all these folks need to come out and give you a list of things that you need to do. I'm telling you, folks, if you don't know what you need to do to prepare for a winter storm, you're not a prepper. Not even, not even a little bit. Not even the tiniest, 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 smallest little bit. Because I've always known what to do to prepare for a snowstorm, what to do during a snowstorm, long before I ever became a prepper. When I was a kid, I knew what we needed to do in order to be ready for a snowstorm. We made sure we had plenty of wood that was ready to go on the wood stove. You know, there's only so many things that you can do, and uh, you just make sure that all of those things are in order. But it is... It is insulting, whether people realize it or not, that these people act like they have to be your babysitter, like they have to tell you every little thing you need to do. I am not going to do that. What I am going to do is ask you to not do something. Please, if you're one of those people that really like to enjoy sharing stuff and these, these simple, helpful ideas and all of that. You know the one with the tea light candles and the clay pot? Please, do not share that. And if you do choose to share that, then write an apology letter to the families of those people that don't make it because they tried using a failed idea because somebody saw it on Facebook. You need to get your heating situation squared away. If you don't have an alternative form of heat, you need to find one or you need to have a, a location that you can go to in order to get warm. Um, somebody had uh, asked a question in one of the preparedness groups a couple, three weeks ago and brought up the situation, you know, what if there was a snowstorm or whatever, the power went out, you know, would you and would you invite people into your home? And my answer was, hell yeah, I would. I'm not going to sit here <clears throat> in a cozy house and watch people, especially families, freeze to death. I'm not going to do it. I'll stack as many people in this place as I can, I can fit in here if I can help keep the, those people alive, if I can help keep those people comfortable, if I can help prevent them from being sick. Absolutely. And I won't bat an eye doing it. Because that's the kind of people we are supposed to be. Don't, if, if, if you see these channels that are coming out that give you the helpful tense that you need to do to the da 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 understand they are just it's fluff fluff I'll say it again and there's only one exception to this by the way but if you are a grown adult and you don't know what you need to do to prepare for a winter storm I gotta question the adult part really hard really hard you shouldn't have to be told this stuff unless, and here's the caveat, unless you just recently moved somewhere that gets cold weather and you're not used to it. If you moved from Florida or California up to one of the northern states, yeah, it's perfectly understandable 
for you to ask for help, for tips, advice, anything anyone can offer to help make sure that you can remain comfortable and alive during a winter storm. But for the majority of us, we shouldn't need a babysitter. And if it were me, and it's not, because I really don't pay much attention to these pools, I would be highly insulted. I honestly would be highly insulted. It blows my mind, folks. Again, I'm not going to give you tips, tricks, what to do, because if you don't know that by now, you know, I'm a very big proponent of removing the warning labels off things and letting nature take its course. This is what, the way it is. I don't know what else to tell people. I'm not going to sit here and lie to people. I'm not going to sit here and butter up people so that I can get more video views, more subscribers, more... No, no, that's not what we do here. The only other thing that I will say about this whole topic is if you haven't considered a diesel heater, go to my video page and, and put in heater, put in diesel, one of the two or both. And I have, I believe I saw 11 videos on diesel heaters. And ours is back there. We just got diesel for it again today. We hadn't been using it um because we didn't have diesel. But we got diesel today. It's in there humming away right now. We could lose power tomorrow. And we're fine. We're fine. Um, I specifically did that. What two years ago. Or we're on the second year. Because I was planning ahead. What if we need. An alternative supply of heat because all we have is electric here and no gas that runs into this place we got electric water heater electric stove electric dryer and electric heat and if you want to see a power bill go absolutely through the roof you touch that thermostat on my wall and you turn on the heater the furnace it is insane what it costs to heat this place with that furnace uh, you often see it little during the winter months you see the heater over here we've got three of those they're oil filled space heaters I'm sure you've seen them before I've also got let me grab it all three of those heaters have an outlet that plugs into the wall and then the heater plugs into that outlet. Okay. This is a wireless thermostat. And all this does. Is tell that outlet. When to turn on or off. And so we. Crank the, you crank the heaters up on high. And just leave them on. And you plug it into these outlets. And again. This will turn it off and on. You can get these on, on Amazon. I'll, uh, I'll find a link for you and put it in the description an affiliate link no it's not to make money it's because yeah a lot of people's never heard of these and they're incredible they really do make a big difference because if you have used space heaters very much you know that the the temperature control on them are a joke either you're going to freeze or you're going to burn up one of the two there is no happy medium this changes that and these are good up to, you know, 1,500 watt heaters. That's what we've got. Three 1,500 watt heaters. We use this to turn them on and off. And that alone saves us a fortune on the power bill. However, that diesel heater is the most economical of all of them. And I can run it on 12 volts. So that's my only advice. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you, well, you need to do this, and you need to do that, and you need because if you don't know this stuff already, yeah, it is what it is. You know, it's it's really time that we stop babying people. It really truly is. We've got rough times right around the corner, and I mean really, really rough times. 
being out of electricity for even a day. It's just a bump in the road compared to what we're looking at. Like I say, just please don't be sharing the stupid ass picture of how you can turn a tea light candle and a clay pot into a 40,000 BTU furnace because it doesn't work. No, stop. It doesn't work. I Every time, every time I get people, Oh, it's done, I'm done, I'm done. Yeah, okay. Good on you. Then you live that way. But don't tell anybody else to do that. Because the truth of the matter is that clay pot and that tea light candle isn't going to warm up a room of any size enough to be able to survive if it's that cold. So I know it's a cutesy little thing to share, but it could literally cost people their lives. And I don't think that's very damn cute. Anyway. If you've got any questions about the diesel heaters or anything like that, feel free to ask. I'm not really that big of an asshole. But I guess it takes a special person to be a YouTuber. I'm just not that special. Shalom.